right, uh, Mr. John, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got your test results here. We're going to try to make this pretty quick for you today. Um, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, oh my God, dude. What? Your blood pressure. What about it? We have got to keep this stuff down. Why? Don't, oh, don't you remember last year? Washed up gimmicks, plastic production, and a complete sellout mentality. Lazy, insipid bullshit. But either way, it's demonic, and I'm incredibly upset that we've given Tones and I a massive platform. Anyways, it doesn't really matter because... I'm not a real doctor. And, and live from ARTV's guest bedroom, it's the worst songs of 2022! Hey neighbor, ready to blow off some steam? Yeah, that's what I thought. Welcome to my 20 worst songs of 2022. Holy cow, new ARTV merch just in time to treat yourself and support the channel? We've got Planet ARTV, a rad turntable design, stickers, mugs, and more. Pick something up if you're able to support the channel. The link is in the description. Hey, my life is like parties over sleep. Our first stop on this tour through the 20 layers of hell lands us at the feet of what I can only describe as the opposite of a dynamic duo. Flo Rida has always rapped without hiding his affinity for pop, but we have got to draw the line. The man is spouting off bullshit motivational quotes faster than your Aunt Karen who just found her Facebook password. The one and only Flo is about 10 years past his commercial peak and it's never shown more than this. After Flo Rida gets done confessing that he's playing monkey in the middle, on the beach, in high heels, Walker struts in to complain about fancy like not winning a Grammy. That's like taking a dump, looking down, and just reveling at it and expecting a trophy in the mail. Next! Feeling like a psycho freak sometimes Trying to get connected, no Wi-Fi Camilla Cabello's solo career continues stalling well into her third act, with the single Psycho Freak catching my ear by having one of the worst sounding vocal melodies of the year. Sounds like a valley up and down, nothing really happened, sad face clown. I can tell Camilla wanted this to be a unique look inside her mind, a mind that's been tangled by years in the spotlight, but it comes across as incoherent and actively irritating, with a wasted guest spot from Willow who outshines the star on her own track. And you know, I really miss when gaming was just like a full contact story. Oh, dude, back in the N64 days, do you yes, remember that? absolutely. Oh, That's exactly dude. what I'm talking about. Dude, I remember sitting there with like an ice cold cherry coke. Do you remember bottle caps? Oh, bottle, bottle caps. Bottle caps, bro, dude. They're oh. my favorite. Dude, I get so ever. nostalgic over those. Seriously, dude. bottle caps, tennis balls, dude. coat hangers. Oh my god, dude. Oh, no, you did wow. not. Dude, do you remember that oh, one dude. time with the coat hanger? Oh. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah remember what the hell, what the hell was on Joey's head? I don't know. Baiting your aging fans with a thoughtless cash grab about the good old days. Classic pro move by Nickelback HQ. Torch the chessboard because our Canadian friends aren't playing the Queen's Gambit. They're playing a little game called Life. And it's a bitch. One of my biggest pet peeves is songs that do nothing other than reference other things. And Those Days is nothing more than a list of lazily sung memories that literally anyone alive in the 1980s would shoot their load of nostalgia all over. When all that's left is nostalgia or circling the drain on old memories, maybe it's time for an updated photograph to replace the broken frame. Actually, forget the frame. I can fix that later. I know what you're all thinking, John, this is all moving so fast, but neighbor, would you make me the happiest YouTuber alive and join me in thanking today's video sponsor, Status Audio. My guess is that you've probably seen one of your favorite YouTube channels promoting Raycons or another lower quality headphone before, but Status's Between Pro True Wireless Bluetooth earbuds outperform them in every way. With up to 48 hours of battery life and a triple driver built in for rich bass, mids, and treble, the difference in sound quality is unmistakable, and I take mine with me pretty much anywhere I go. This company believes in making audiophile quality products more more affordable and within reach even for a tighter budget. So if you've been waiting on a sign that maybe it's time to upgrade those earbuds, this is that sign. Use the top link in the description down below and save an extra 10% off your order when you plug in code ARTV at checkout over at Status Audio. Started throwing ass, you think that I'ma throw some cash on you, but I'm just clapping you, I know what's up, I know I'm fine.
Looking for reliability in a man who goes by the name Russ might have been my first mistake, but as somebody who successfully avoided this douche nozzle like the plague for years, First impressions are not great. Handsomer finds Russ in what seems to be his natural habitat of superficial flexing, stealing your girl, and spending money like it's a personality trait. What do you think of this? That makes you attractive. Yeah! The beat is about as hype as a Kevin McLeod track, and the fans, teenage boys guided by dreams of living vicariously through their favorite rappers Russ, Nav, or anyone else in that same realm of clout chasing goblins. So you may have noticed that I skipped out on covering this year's Five Finger Death Punch album. I know for me, it must feel like seeing somebody sitting down to a Thanksgiving feast only to watch everybody else eat. But for once, I said, you know what? I'm fucking full. Unfortunately, my past caught back up to me. I tempted fate, and after a rough encounter with an ex-roommate... <laughs> this is my favorite part of the movie. I realized it didn't matter if I was being handed lemons or moldy cheese. You take the big bad dumb thing and give it a big dumb public spanking so that hopefully it never happens again. Oh, it's gonna happen again. And I'm looking at you, motherfucker. The only thing smoother than Ivan Moody's head these days is his brain. I'd like to thank the Bible for sin. I'd count the ways, but they're too deep. And the part before the breakdown kills me, this is the part where you fucking scream! And then Ivan yells bounce, as if System of a Down gave him the authority to say that. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm slow to point out any positives that they may have musically speaking. They've fallen off far too low for me to even bother caring to point them out. I can lick it, I can ride it while you slip it and slide it. I can do all them little tricks and keep the dick up inside it. As long as we're dredging the bottom of the lake, Swing! Forgive me, I got a little too excited when I found out that I'd once again be tearing apart another atrocious abomination from Miss Nicki Minaj. But first, I gotta check to make sure that my balls aren't swollen. All right, I'm gonna need you to turn and cough. Super freaky girl sees Nicki back on top metaphorically and literally, grinding the night away on a sample that you've perhaps heard before. Look, bitch, I'm Rick J. Yeah, just, uh... Toss a dick up inside it and light the match because this dumpster is pure fire. Happy holidays, everyone. Now, forgive me, but I'm going to ruin your holiday in 10 seconds or less. Chris Brown now records Christmas music, and this is the cover art. Iffy, you've run through so many negative adjectives towards women that the hoes are now Iffy? The fact that domestic abuser unapologetic fuckface Chris Brown still has an extremely successful music career is one of the most unfair things that I continue to see in the industry when others are blacklisted for far less. But it's not even a situation where you can be like, nah, he's a dummy, but what about his art? Rant on the person himself aside, the song is a flaming pile of shit with an ego to match. His flow has zero identity, I absolutely hate the 50 Cent Into Club interpolation, and the lyrics are the same as his thousand other F These Hoes anthems, so why even bother existing anywhere other than a landfill? Country star Walker Hayes is riding the viral wave of last year's number one worst song, Fancy Like, moving on down to y'all life. A song that's about a step away from being a recruitment ad for white people to come move to the South. Hey you, do you like ball sports? Sports ball, Jesus Christ, Bass Pro Shops, and as much casual racism as your heart can take? Then you need to come on down to the Bible Belt. Y'all life is a little tricky for me, since I don't find the music to be off-putting at all. In fact, it sounds like a solid enough time. I grew up on country. The twang ain't the problem. It's the earful of southern nonsense from this walking, talking Applebee's menu that makes me want to tie off the noose. Morgan Whalen, you gotta get yourself together, man. Get your life together. You gotta follow this three-step proven method. Step one, we've already done. Apologize and disappear. Step two, we play the black friend card upon return. Step three, heh, that's my favorite step of all, profit. Broadway Girls is a nightmarish genre mash that tastes like cornbread that's soaked overnight in whiskey. I know it's not about those Broadway girls, 
but I'm gonna keep myself sane over here by pretending that these two goons are posted up outside of the stage door in NYC, getting rejected by every performer that comes their way. Morgan takes that charming southern drawl to the nth degree as he practically dominates and consumes the entire song with his whimpering, even though he's apparently just a featured guest. Kicking trap beats try forcing their way around a limp acoustic guitar, only to get choked out like a tree trying to put down roots in the middle of a highway. No one asked for this, no one needed the pairing, and after an entire year of this Frankenstein monster haunting my head, the burden is yours now too. The year of the overbearing, painfully lazy sampling rolls on! David Guetta and BB Rexa are riding a weird resurgence in popularity following the release of their viral hit, I'm Good, which is a reworking of the classic hit, I'm Blue, that pisses all over its grave. Eiffel 65's classic bop continues thriving decades later thanks to an undying energy and that weird kooky hook that makes you belt out gibberish at the top of your voice. I'm Good has none of that. It's the Italian group's melody stamped all over it with none of the subtle charm. It's an in-your-face, so dumb a caveman could understand concept about having a great fucking time, going out, taking over the town. I don't need you, boy. I'm not thinking about you. I'm definitely not. That's probably why I keep saying it. Sure, Jan. Am I way too annoyed about a stupid club anthem sampling an older hit? Maybe. But the sheer lack of effort all around is embarrassing. Kind of like the live action Lion King. Cause don't talk to me if you think that holds a candle in the wind to the original. Even with nothing on, but I made you look As the roaring 20s have been more of a radioactive wasteland thus far, not much surprises me anymore. Megan Trainer having another top 40 hit on a new song doing her old doo-wop style? That shit surprised me. Made You Look continues down the road the singer so gleefully forced us down years ago, steamrolling finesse in exchange for that sweet, sweet TikTok clout. The single finds the world's number one spy kid stan, ogling herself with luxurious brands every basic bitch in existence loves assigning high value to. Gucci, Louie, wow, Megan, pretty unique taste, I gotta say. But personally, the great value brand stays steady dropping that frugal fire, though. Simple Plan can't let go of the past. They write insipid, try-hard anthems to the tune of buzzy, overproduced power chords. So no, I don't think they were the ones that were up to the task of writing a meaningful song about anxiety. As someone with some pretty intense bouts with the unholy mental warfare, I find it really insulting that this group of like 43-year-olds continue writing as if they're anxious, relatable teenagers just like you. But John, isn't that a good thing? They're raising awareness. For what? The fact that anxiety sucks? Holy shit, wow, what a revelation! Imagine if My Chemical Romance had written the song Cancer, but instead of heartbreaking lyrics about someone's final moments before death, they said, wow, cancer is icky, I sure do wish somebody would do something about it. Obviously, the kiddie pool sprung a leak, and hand to God, this track is awful, with the tastelessly auto-tuned Pierre Bouvier doing his part to save the planet by recycling every line of the song from the cliche mantra Hall of Fame. Sam Smith and Kim Petras are the unholy duo that the world apparently wanted. And when they dominated charts worldwide, all I could think about this barrier-smashing hit was... Really? Music has historically been a very unfair industry. So for non-binary star Sam Smith to team up with transgender artist Kim Petras and go number one on the charts... The ringing of the alarm was loud, and I get why. But it's a damn shame Unholy turned out the way it did, because I hear potential with the gospel choir urgency and some of the more lavish gestures, but realistically, they cut the song way too short, there's no bridge, they gambled on style over substance, and they borderline glamorized the act of cheating on a partner. Bit backwards minded for such a progressive pairing, which I do find to be weird, because it's like, yes, we have these two queer artists hitting this level of success that meant a lot for a lot of people, 
but they got there by using the same shitty ideology behind songs like Ariana Grande's Break Up With Your Boyfriend. It really just all feels like a massive missed opportunity that's being celebrated for what it represents instead of what Unholy actually is. Give me back my hoodie so I'm kicking down doors You weren't even pretty looking back and I'm sure you still miss me the entirety of IDGAF, a collab between two rotten avocados, Black Bear and Boy With Uke, ironically hinges on you giving a fuck, which you shouldn't because this is a bratty, irritating, and unnecessarily mean single. Sure, it's kinda catchy, but at what cost? The guy spends the entire song insulting his ex relentlessly by calling her not pretty, insulting her ugly clothes, and hyping himself up like he's a god. Where is my hoodie? It's right, I mean, it's right. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. I know it's in here. Where is it? It's in here? It's right, it's right, it's, it's right there. Where, this? No, you think this no, is my hoodie? No, you think right. I'd wear this piece of shit? Oh, come on, my grandma gave me that. Those are some bold words coming from a faceless gimmick on the internet who had the audacity to name himself a boy with you. I don't care if it's ironic or not. No, you can't be my little bitch. Yeah. The baby fell off faster than a plane nosediving straight to the bottom of the ocean after his ignorant, hateful comments at Rolling Loud 2021 deservedly knocked the rapper's career out of orbit. Not even his day ones knew what to do with Sneaky Link Anthem, a January drop that most probably forgot about, but my god, it reeks of desperation. Over time, I saw an increased pressure for the baby to shake up his flow, but I can guarantee you that nobody on God's green earth meant this. Sneaking. Let me get this straight. It's a song about a side girl that you're sneaking around with and cheating on your wife or longtime partner with, yet DaBaby makes it sound like the most unsexy thing that could ever be happening. It's like if I tossed on some AJR to get my wife in the mood. Absolutely not. I'm normally not the type of person that would say this, but for the little baby, uh, you took the L, fell off hard, and L plus ratio, or whatever the kids are saying these days, because it's all true. You got older cause you could it lie. I'm all 17 at 35. The quirky, goofy, hat-wearing brothers put their worst foot forward on the DJ is crying for help, a fitting title that sums up how every DJ must feel every time they're forced to play their music. Might as well get some tunes while I wait. I don't even get paid nearly enough for this shit, so uh, here's that new AJR single for the 18th time today, probably, just a guesstimation. Do touch that dial, because you are not going to want to hear this Okay, buddy, we're just going to change that. You're unfortunately still tuned to 107.9. I have a wife and kids, but here's AJR. There's a lot of suspicious lyrics thrown about carelessly. And even knowing that these guys make their living off of coddling infantile adults, that 17 at 35 lyric was still weird as fuck. Also, shoving a random violin solo in the mix alongside the terribly inept production is almost laugh out loud funny when you sit there reading the lyrics in tandem. They're like a mole that just keeps growing on your back no matter how many times you have it removed. February 4th, 2022 is a day that I unfortunately will not forget anytime soon. Pure terror infiltrated my mind from the moment that I saw the title Emo Girl. We knew the rapper turned rocker was bad, but heinous? Dare I say unforgivable? Maybe we were there, but we definitely are now. Machine Gun Kelly continues appropriating emo culture for profit amidst a sea of abysmal lyrics on Emo Girl. The guy's nasally voice drives me ballistic, as does Travis Barker's shoddy production, and plus, the song is just so dumb and patronizing too. I am by no means a fan of Willow or the words that she sang on Emo Girl. I mean, Kiss Me, Holy Fuck, I'm Bleeding on Your Blink Tea is probably the most cringe line of the year, but at least she can kind of sing. Oh, yeah, damn, haha, <laughs> damn, Black Bear, Megan Fox, hottie. Alright, I think we got the album. If you think this is terrible, if this is the bottom of the totem pole, oh, we're about to drop underground.
My brain can't seem to pull out the right words for this win. I mean, we're in the top five of the worst of the year. It's already absolutely zonked. Royal and the Serpent is a frequently name-dropped artist in the alternative music world, so I decided to give her music a chance. First, I heard the Stand Atlantic feature on the song Petty Party and absolutely hated it. Then I queued up Fuckboy Rejects, only to realize that I don't even think I truly knew what hate was. Everything about it, the song, the video, it's trying so, so hard to let you know that I'm not like the other girls. Fuckboy Rejects, put your hands around my neck. That's healthy. Not to mention the tumultuous production of this song does not come together in any kind of unifying fashion at all. It's so unsatisfying and unpleasant. In fact, the chorus in and of itself, if you left that on a loop, that's CIA torture right there. Leah Kate writes anthems that cut to the bone. Pairing booming, radio-ready choruses with poignant, hyper-specific details, her songs are immediate and razor-sharp. That's literally the Spotify bio for the woman who wrote this song, Twinkle Twinkle Little Bitch. Bone-cutting songs with hyper-specific details? Are you kidding me? Obviously, everyone's number one complaint about Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was the lack of hyper-specific details. I mean, what the hell, Mom? Which star is even twinkling? All I know is that it couldn't be Leah. Her voice, attitude, and try-hard personality scream pick-me louder than a cheerleader's megaphone. How this came out in 2022, it's beyond me. It's incredibly outdated. And the fact that Leah Kate is 30 years old, literally 30, not exaggerating, and having this level of a bratty tantrum over an ex, it's so immature. It's literally called Twinkle Twinkle Little Bitch. It makes Machine Gun Kelly sound like a distinguished poet. Jeepers creepers, we have seen some shit up until this point, and I think you guys are gonna need a breather more than I do before I reveal number one, so here's a quick montage of some other songs that I found to be pretty yikes, but not quite top 20 worthy. I've roasted Skillet relentlessly over the years. I've had them on so many of my worst lists, but never actually at number one. So they have ascended to the top of a throne, all right. Just a little bit more of a porcelain one than I think they were imagining. Everything about Skillet's White Horse is so shockingly bad that I don't even have jokes. It's like a so horrible that I almost can't believe it type of song, but their fans are so brainwashed, the poor little bastards think that Skillet are innovators. Nothing about this even makes sense musically. All the chaotic elements sound like six different songs tossed in a blender as they shoehorn in random electronic effects stolen from Imagine Dragons, while Skillet reads passages from the Book of Revelation. Their lead singer, John Cooper, sent a twinge down my spine by rapping about the rapture. That is too perfect. I can't make that up, but how does anybody take this seriously? Bellowing on about the end times while your bandmates essentially program in their entire performance? That is an ugly, awful look, but not nearly as ugly as their frontman's performance. He's like the opposite of King Midas. Instead of gold, everything he touches turns to shit. What a wild year with loads of terrible songs to choose from. These were the 20 that I considered to be the worst. It was just my opinion, so please take a second to hit the like button, share the video out, and take to the comments section and let me know your most hated tracks of the year. We always put a ton of work into these to try and make them fun and entertaining, so I hope you did enjoy it. Stay tuned for more year-end content right here on ARTV.